At 2 a.m. on June 19th, Russian President Vladimir Putin arrived in Pyongyang, beginning a lightning visit to North Korea. This is Putin's first visit to North Korea in 24 years. North Korean leader Kim Jong-un was thrilled by Putin's arrival. Kim Jong-un personally greeted Putin on the tarmac. They shook hands, hugged, and walked down the red carpet with the North Korean military honor guard lining the way. Putin then invited Kim to ride with him in his presidential car to the Gumsu San guesthouse. The streets and buildings along the way were decorated with Russian flags and large portraits of Putin. Since 2023, the world's democratic nations have labeled Russia, North Korea, Iran, and China as the axis of evil for their human rights violations and threats to global security. These countries, facing economic sanctions from the U.S. and its allies, have grown closer, supporting each other against isolation. After the talks between Putin and Kim Jong-un, both sides signed a new comprehensive strategic partnership agreement. Article 4 of the agreement stipulates, if either party faces armed invasion and is in a state of war, the other party will immediately provide military and other assistance using all available means in accordance with Article 51 of the United Nations Charter and national laws. Article 51 of the United Nations Charter stipulates that member states have the right to take individual or collective self-defense actions. Kim endorsed Putin's statement linking the deepening of their relationship to opposing Western, particularly U.S., hegemony and imperialism, including support for Ukraine. The news of expanding military cooperation between Russia and North Korea has caused global unease. World leaders have expressed that this will deteriorate the security environment in the Indo-Pacific region and have strongly condemned it. Simultaneously, several measures were announced to counter Putin's aggression. New Zealand's foreign minister, Christopher Luxon, who is currently visiting Japan, and Japanese Prime Minister Fumio Kishida were the first to issue a joint statement with strong wording condemning the increasing military military cooperation between North Korea and Russia, including North Korea's supply of ballistic missiles to Russia for attacking Ukraine. In the face of threats from China, North Korea, and Russia, Japan has been accelerating military construction and expanding its defense partnerships. On the 21st, the South Korean government summoned Russian ambassador Georgi Sinoviev to protest the joint defense agreement announced between Russia and North Korea by Putin and Kim Jong-un. The South Korean government stated it would consider providing weapons to Ukraine to counter Russia's invasion. The White House announced a suspension of air defense missile deliveries to allies to prioritize providing them to Ukraine to replenish the stocks of the war-torn country. The U.S. Pentagon stated that Ukraine can use the weapons provided by the U.S. to counter any cross-border attacks launched from within Russia, as long as long-range ammunition is not used to strike deep within Russian territory. Romania announced that it would provide Kiev with Patriot air defense systems to strengthen Ukraine's aerial defenses. In early June, the French Thales Group announced that, following the provision of the first air defense system to Ukraine in 2023, it would provide another, more advanced air defense system. Online commentators believe that historically, no country has been able to withstand comprehensive political, economic, and military encirclement by over 100 countries. Russia's complete collapse is only a matter of time. Since Russia invaded Ukraine in February 2022, the U.S., the U.K., the E.U., as well as Australia, Canada, and Japan have imposed more than 16,500 sanctions on Russia, which are regarded as the strongest international sanctions in Russian history. Among these sanctions, 350 billion U.S. dollars worth of foreign exchange reserves have been frozen, accounting for about half of Russia's total foreign exchange reserves. In Europe, about 70 percent of Russian bank assets have also been frozen. In addition to the embargo on Russian oil and natural gas facilities, the sanctions include banning the export of technology that could be used to manufacture weapons, prohibiting flights from Russia from entering, and sanctioning oligarchs connected to the Kremlin. Despite this, Russia has managed to evade sanctions through various means, such as cooperating with China and North Korea, because Russia needs a large number of weapons for the Ukrainian battlefield. As Western countries 
provide arms to Ukraine, Russia can only rely on its remaining allies. However, China's situation is also difficult. In October 2022, the United States announced comprehensive restrictions on the sale of advanced chips to China to prevent China from developing high-tech weapons. Moreover, the U.S. and Europe continuously warned the Chinese authorities against providing weapons and military materials to Russia, threatening the most severe sanctions and punishments if they do. North Korea's current situation is almost a mess. Since North Korea conducted its first nuclear test in 2006, the United Nations Security Council has passed multiple resolutions imposing a series of economic sanctions on North Korea. These include banning North Korea from importing all military goods, luxury items, and crude oil, and prohibiting North Korea from exporting gold, rare earth minerals, coal, iron, and lead. The sanctions aim to limit North Korea's nuclear weapons program and other military activities. After the dissolution of the Soviet Union, the relationship between Russia and North Korea was far less than the level during the Soviet era. In July 2000, shortly after Putin became president, he visited North Korea and signed a treaty with Kim Jong-il that focused solely on economic cooperation rather than military defense. However, as Russia becomes increasingly isolated, the relationship between Russia and North Korea has shifted from mutual pleasantries to mutual interests. Putin stated in Russia, Russia and North Korea have established very deep relations, and Kim Jong-un claimed the friendship is unprecedented, surpassing that of his father's and grandfather's generations. These two countries, simultaneously subjected to international sanctions, are huddling together for warmth, establishing a military alliance that has caused global concern. However, people are very aware that the force behind Russia and North Korea is the Chinese. China purchases oil and natural gas from Russia, and Beijing remains an important ally for Russia despite its isolation. North Korea receives a quarter to half of its oil from Russia, but at least 80% of its trade is related to China. Like China, Russia has long supported North Korea, sharing a deep brotherly bond. However, North Korea, sandwiched between China and Russia, experiences fluctuating bilateral relations with both. Most of the time, China appeases North Korea, while North Korea flatters Russia. The Ukraine war changed Putin's view of North Korea. Putin actively courted North Korea, and in September last year, Kim Jong-un visited by armored train several military bases in Siberia. He inspected various advanced Russian weapons, including a modern satellite launch site. U.S. officials believe that Russia may provide advanced weapons to North Korea or assist in its nuclear program. It is worth noting that Russia typically does not share its most advanced military technology with other countries. Korean-American writer and political commentator Sumi Terry told the BBC, I think it's pretty pathetic that Putin has to resort to relying on the 198th ranked economy in the world to help his war effort. Public opinion views the relationship between North Korea and Russia as a marriage of convenience due to Western isolation. However, Chinese netizens use the phrase running out of ammunition and food to describe this partnership. Putin needs weapons from North Korea, while North Korea severely sanctioned, suffers from food shortages. U.S. officials stated that since last year, North Korea has sent Russia 11,000 containers filled with ammunition, ballistic missiles, and other military supplies. In return, Pyongyang received much-needed food and economic aid from Moscow. Both Russia and North Korea deny this. As members of the Axis of Evil, they share aggressive ambitions. North Korea, besides seeking support from Xi Jinping, needs Putin's strong backing, especially since Putin is in a desperate situation and urgently needs Kim as a reliable ally. To show the world strong support, a day before Putin arrived in Pyongyang, over 20 North Korean soldiers briefly crossed the Korean border to demonstrate their determination to defend their sovereignty. However, they retreated after South Korean soldiers fired warning shots. This is the second time recently that North Korean soldiers have crossed the border. Since the Korean War ended in July 1953, Communist North Korea and Democratic South Korea have been divided by the 38th parallel. Over decades, South Korea has developed into a wealthy, modern society, while North Korea remains closed off, with its people impoverished and struggling for basic needs. Despite this, North Korea has never abandoned its goal of unifying the Korean peninsula. It invests heavily in military development and nuclear weapons, keeping South Korea under constant threat. This situation is somewhat similar to Taiwan. 
Although both South Korea and Taiwan have U.S. security commitments, Taiwan has the natural barrier of the Taiwan Strait, making it harder for China to invade. South Korea, however, is separated only by the 38th parallel, which soldiers can easily cross. In the early stages of the Korean War in 1950, North Korea, led by Kim Il-sung and supported by China and the Soviet Union, quickly crossed the 38th parallel and reached Seoul. Without aiding South Korea, the country might not exist today. Learning from this history, South Korea has been cautiously vigilant against North Korea's potential aggression. To ensure its safety, nearly 30,000 U.S. troops are still stationed in South Korea. In the early 21st century, under Kim Jong-il, North Korea's supreme leader and Kim Jong-un's father, South Korea's sunshine policy led to frequent interactions between the two nations. South Korean presidents held historic summits with Kim Jong-il, resulting in agreements like the Joint Declaration of South and North, the Declaration on the Advancement of North-South Relations, Peace and Prosperity. These efforts reduced hostility and initiated economic cooperation. This cooperation alleviated North Korea's economic woes and enhanced South Korea's security with bilateral trade exceeding 1 billion U.S. dollars. South Korea became North Korea's second largest trading partner after China. In December 2011, Kim Jong-il died, and his 27-year-old son, Kim Jong-un, became North Korea's top leader. People thought that since Kim Jong-un studied in Switzerland and lived in a Western culture for a long time, he might have been influenced by Western democratic ideas and would lead North Korea towards prosperity and openness. However, Kim Jong-un's actions quickly shocked the world. His internal policies of terror politics and his hardline stance against South Korea, along with his brutal and ruthless human rights abuses, were even worse than those of his grandfather Kim Il-sung and his father Kim Jong-il. Publicly available information shows that Kim Jong-un, to establish his authority, executed or made disappear many of his father's trusted advisors. For example, a military officer was executed with an anti-aircraft gun for disloyalty after dozing off during one of Kim's speeches. Hundreds of senior officers were forced to watch the execution. Jang Song tak Kim Jong-un's uncle and the then vice chairman of the National Defense Commission was arrested during a party meeting and was executed for counter-revolutionary activities. Human rights organizations report that in Kim Jong-un's first year in power, the number of public executions for anti-state crimes increased more than eight times compared to the previous year. The North Korean government also ordered the immediate shooting of defectors trying to flee the country. Consequently, the number of people shot while crossing the Yalu or Tumen rivers increased significantly. There were even instances where North Korean soldiers shot and killed defectors who had already reached Chinese territory. While harshly suppressing any challenges to authority, Kim Jong also seeks to develop friendly relations with major world powers, attempting to change North Korea's image as a global peace disruptor. Meanwhile, North Korea actively develops nuclear and thermonuclear weapons and launches ballistic missiles, aiming to become a military power. By 2017, North Korea had conducted six nuclear tests, with the sixth one, the, a hydrogen bomb, having an estimated yield of over 100 kilotons. The same year, North Korea successfully tested an intercontinental missile capable of reaching the United States. North Korea's nuclear crisis has caused global tension, as it is the only country this century to conduct nuclear tests. Due to their autocratic nature and shared ambition of world domination, however, North Korea's almost unchecked progress in nuclear development has worried both Putin and Xi Jinping. In September 2017, the U.S. passed a resolution calling for North Korea to halt its nuclear tests and missile launches and imposing economic sanctions. Surprisingly, both China and Russia voted in favor of the sanctions. Abandoned by China and Russia, Kim Jong-un found himself in a difficult position. To force North Korea to abandon its nuclear program, former U.S. President Donald Trump met with Kim Jong-un three times. The U.S. attempted to negotiate offering to ease sanctions in exchange for North Korea to give up its nuclear and missile programs to ensure the security of the Korean peninsula. Trump said it was a great day for the world and that he felt honored to be there. Despite these gestures of goodwill, Kim Jong-un's youthful arrogance and ambition couldn't be contained. After initially agreeing to halt nuclear tests, North Korea resumed its aggressive stance. In June 2020, North Korea claimed that sending leaflets violated the peace agreement and the resumption of military exercises against the South. Public opinion suggests that Kim Jong-un's sudden boldness comes from the support of China and Russia. As tensions between Russia and China and the U.S. increase, both China and Russia want to ensure North Korea doesn't lean towards the U.S. North Korea is an essential ally for them. 
Thus, China and Russia provide North Korea with necessary materials through illegal channels, with Russia even providing weapon production technology. In February 2022, Putin officially announced the invasion of Ukraine. A month later, North Korea successfully conducted a test launch of the Hwasong-17 intercontinental ballistic missile at Pyongyang International Airport. A few months later, North Korea enshrined its nuclear weapons policy into its constitution. Taking advantage of Russia's invasion of Ukraine, North Korea increased its military provocations against South Korea, including sending drones across the border to fly over Seoul and Incheon for about seven hours. Despite economic difficulties, Pyongyang conducted a series of record-breaking weapons tests in 2023, including its first solid-fuel ballistic missile, which experts consider a significant technological breakthrough. Solid-fuel missiles are faster to launch and easier to move and hide, making them harder to detect. Analysts point out that Kim Jong-un may use nuclear weapons against South Korea in a future war. As international relations form two major camps and tensions rise between North and South Korea, China does not want to leave North Korea isolated. In April, Zhao Lejie, China's third highest-ranking official, visited North Korea and met with Kim Jong-un. The visit was seen as an effort to fully resolve bilateral relations during the year of China-North Korea friendship. A meeting between Xi Jinping and Kim Jong-un, the first since 2019 visit to North Korea, is also expected soon. Putin's visit to Pyongyang undoubtedly boosted Kim's morale. Putin's warm embrace signaled that aggressive wars are not frightening and that as long as the axis of evil stands united, the world can do little against them. Whether Kim Jong-un would receive military support from China and Russia if he starts a war like his grandfather did remains uncertain.